Greetings, I'm Mark with Unlimited Story, unlimited-story.com, a channel dedicated to writing, world building, marketing, and most importantly, getting things done. If you want to support this channel and the things that I do, search Unlimited Story on Kindle or Kindle Vela. That's me. You can do like a little reading marathon. Helps me out a lot. And thanks. In this video, I am going to be going over Judo Girl Vampire Love Triangle. Wow. This is already just looking great. And is by uh, Liam Stein. Here is the description. Jen Whitmore is a black belt in judo from Flushing who aspires to open her own dojo. She just started dating Jeremy, a crypto millionaire with a vampiric dark side. Things are starting to heat up until Jen's ex-boyfriend, Rick Berger, s returns for the summer after having graduated from a top Ivy League school. When Jen goes to catch up with Rick at his parents' house on the wealthy North Shore of Long Island, they have an argument. She's mad but now finds herself longing for more. It is paranormal, heroin, romance, vampire, martial arts, love triangle, and fashionable heroines. And of course, here's the graphic. We got clearly a judo girl and clearly a, uh, a vampire. I don't see a triangle though. Maybe it's hidden somewhere in here, but <laughs> let's get started. I have just finished reading Judo Girl Vampire Love Triangle, and uh, this is this is great. Like I I spent my time reading this with a smile. Okay, like I don't know what it is about this story. It, it just it's pleasing me. Okay, like I'm finding this to be very enjoyable. And here's one thing that I really uh, really want to point out is that. You can have the most sophisticated writing in the world. You can write something that's technically accurate, you know, like technical skills, very accurate. Um, you could write the best piece of literature, but if it's not enjoyable to certain people or whoever your audience is, uh, then it's not going to work, right? Because I've read plenty of books and, you know, on Kindle Vela too, and some of them just don't jive with what I'm into. Uh, this one specifically, I am <laughs> just super into it. And like, don't get me wrong, there are technical problems with this that, that just don't work. So. For example, I had to take notes, and I know you can't read this, but I had to start taking notes about the characters in this book because I wasn't able to keep them straight. There was a, there was like a little curveball in here. Um, actually, I'll just go right into the characters right now. So we got a main character. That's uh, that's our Jen uh, Whitmore. I didn't really remember her last name, but it's on the description. Anyway, she uh, apparently has uh, big breasts, and uh, she knows judo. And then there's her mom, who is Wendy, and that's what screwed. That's totally what screwed me up. Okay because they say it's her mom, then they call her Wendy. So don't do that. Like, I don't like that. It messes with me and it makes me think that I completely missed something. So I had to reread the first section just to find out that I just didn't get it right. So apparently her mom's got big breasts too. I guess, I guess it's a family trait. There's a sister named uh, Marsha. She's useless, I guess. I, I don't know. She runs around in skimpy outfits. Um, there is her friend, uh, what did I write down? Tessa? She seems fine. She seems totally normal. She drives her around. Uh, she was used as most friends are used uh, to further the plot and you do some, you know, some exposition. So, I mean, it, it worked well. Like, I didn't feel like it was, I mean, I knew what it was, but I felt like it was seemed pretty natural. And that was the vehicle to talk about her boyfriends. So there is Jeremy her hookup. She's been hooking up with this guy. Apparently he's got pointy teeth. And man, this is where the comedy comes in. She's like, yeah, he's got pointy teeth. And then the friend's like, oh, he's a vampire. And I'm just like, what? Is it straight up just pointed out? And this is what I love. Like this story is not meant to be taken seriously. It's basically like reading Deadpool. This is how I think of it. I'm like, oh, it's like Deadpool. I just don't even need, I can just laugh at it and enjoy it. And I don't even have to think. And it's great. So, I mean, that, that works out. Uh, that totally works out for me. So, our dusty blonde is Jeremy, and then, uh, I forget, oh, there's Rick, Rick's the Ivy League guy in the description, uh, apparently they're supposed to visit him, blah, 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 and then the best character uh, is, is right now, I'm going to talk about him, it is Sensei Tanaka. This dude is amazing. Like, I don't know what it is about him, but I, well, actually, I do, I do know exactly what it is about him. Sensei Tanaka, uh, you know, he, he promotes uh, Jen into being, like, some type of assistant so now she can make money or whatever. But what's awesome is he's like, I see you had a problem. And uh, she's like, 
yeah, you know, I don't really want to talk about it. And then Sensei Tanaka talks in third person and is pointed out in the story. She's like, yeah, sometimes he talks in third person and it's funny. And it is. He, he even says, like, you know, something about, uh, I'm totally, you know, Sensei, you should talk to Sensei Tanaka. He's hip and, you know, in with the times and so on. I'm just, I'm just like, what? Is this really happening? This is hilarious. Like, it's just, I don't know, I, I found it very comical. And I, I, I don't know why, but there's something about this story that I just, I sat there and just really enjoyed. I, by the time I finished this third, the third episode, I was like, this is, this is good. And I was like, oh, maybe I can read some more. I don't even know. It just, there was something about it that uh, really jived with me and probably my uh, sick, sick sense of humor. So what really even happened in the story in the first episode, um, they talked to mom get dressed, got to go to school. Hey, we got to go see Rick, your IV buddy, blah, blah, blah. Get in a car, meet up with a friend, go to judo school, talk to the coolest sensei on planet earth. And they get a call from her, uh, sparkly, dusty, uh, blonde vampire man. And, uh, he seems really nice by the way. He's very, uh, oh my God. He left so many, he just says stuff that like, you're like, oh, okay. He's a vampire. He's like, oh, I would have waited thousands of years for you. I'm like, of course you would you dusty vampire and then just oh my god so either way it basically ends with uh with her chat with her her vampire friend and and that's it so uh yeah and that is a wrap for judo girl vampire love triangle if you like this kind of stuff subscribe or at least watch another one of my videos that youtube recommends if you want your uh, Kindle Vela story reviewed, uh, just hit me up on Discord. I have links in the description below. Go to the website. There's a Discord. Just click on it, and you're, uh, you're good to go. Peace.